and we're <laughs> <laughs> What's up, everybody? It is your boy Alexis Maurice and your boy Trey Hollywood, and it's season two of oh Hollywood Happenings. We have missed you guys since June. Man. June, yeah. June thirtieth was the last episode that we actually had, and we appreciate all the love and support. Um, but it's time to go ahead and get started. We have a lot to talk about, so let's go ahead and pour yourself a glass of wine. Today we're drinking on Behringer Moscato 1876. Put on some lipstick, honey, Woo. and pull yourself together. Pull up a chair because we got a lot to talk about Woo. with the latest happenings in Hollywood. Y'all hear blurred lines, right? That's like the unofficial song of the summer. <laughs> I mean, it was on everybody's, you know, radio it playlist was. or it whatever, was. but it won absolutely no awards and none of the shows or anything like that. Turn that shit off. Turn it off. You, you want to turn it off? Yeah, we're done. Turn it off. I was, I was over it. From See, the you on that stupid shit already. Yeah, and was, we ain't even five minutes into the I, show. I was really over the shit. But anywho, before we get into the latest happenings of Hollywood, we want to take a moment to just kind of... Um, for us, for Trey to tell us what's been going on with him. If you guys remember when we ended the last season, Trey relocated to Atlanta, Georgia, and he's been there since July 1st. So, Trey, what's been going on? How's oh Atlanta God. treating you? Atlanta is treating me well. I've missed you. I missed you a lot. Mm -hmm. Oh, you have missed me? Mm -hmm. oh, that's, 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 that's. I mean, you know, at times I've missed you. You so. miss me. Whatever. You always on my phone. No, I'm not. Don't be playing. I am not always on your phone. <laughs> I'm like, y'all, you know, always right, on my phone. Right, exactly. That's why I miss him, though, because, you know, it's just like, I don't be hearing from him. Anywho, but what's really me <laughs> As y'all know, but I really no, know. I need to start reaching out to him a little bit more. Okay, anyway, go ahead. Yeah, it's a shade. That's a palm tree. Yeah. Anyway, move along. How but, is um, Atlanta treating you? Atlanta treating treat me well. I mean, I went down there, as y'all know, in June um, to, you know, pursue my, my goals and my careers. I wasn't going to leave Hollywood Happens behind. Mm -hmm. um, but I really wanted to get into my acting and my production, the things that I wanted to do. Um, one of the things is that I've, I'm wrapping up a movie that I was doing a short film. Um, thank you. We actually finished filming this weekend. Mm -hmm. Um... I'm also being casted on a web series. It's a it's a homosexual web series. Um, Why does everything have to? Can you just say? I just want to categorize. Series? Why do you always try to try to because, put gay on everything? Because eventually, I'm it's because eventually I want to bring the creator oh of it God, to the show. I'm gonna that. tell you why. I'm gonna specify. I'm specify. Eventually, I want to bring the creator of the show to Hollywood Happiness. And of course, I wanted to already be known that that's what the show is about. Can it just be a web series? No. Give yourself more credit. It's a gay web series. No. It's a homosexual web series. I'm, I, gay, 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 I'm gay, gay. I'm telling y'all what I'm doing. That's what I'm doing. God's Seriously. coming back really, really soon for you guys. Uh, <laughs> you going to do that this season? <laughs> you going to do that this season? Ain't shit change. Ain't shit change. Anywho, anyway. I'm also um, in, the, in the process of developing my own reality show. I won't specify what type it is because I don't want to cause no drama. Right. But I'm in the process of developing a, web, uh, a reality show of mine. So that's what I've been really working on. Mm -hmm. um, I've been networking, also been trying to get a couple of auditions in. Tyler Perry is difficult to get into. Really? If you don't know that, he is. I'm pretty sure it's like a... It's a, a process. Circle. I'm pretty sure that whole Atlanta thing is very tight-knit or whatever. Maybe kind of hard for you to get into. I mean, because everybody's there is trying to... Yeah. You know, it's like a little Hollywood. So everybody's trying to do their thing and everybody's trying to do this and everybody's trying to do that. And it's probably hard, but if you get in, honey, if you get in, get in, I'm get trying. in. You I'm trying. I'm not going, I ain't going to give up because it's a, that's the goal and that's the goal that I'm, I've been trying to do, but it's very difficult. It's like paying off um, your tuition, college. All yeah, because you ain't going to never ever stop paying yep. that. Um, for me, I've been here in Charlotte, um, had the opportunity to do a guest appearance on the Jeffrey Lankin show which was a local talk show in Columbia, South Carolina, where I'm from. So I did a little uh, entertainment, you know, spot there. Um, I also was um, selected to be interviewed by All In PR, which is a PR firm for, um, you know, up and coming artists and things of that particular nature. So I had an interview, you know, web chat with them or whatever. So that was fun. So that's really for the most part, you know, what I've been doing and we have been planning this season and you know in the next couple of weeks you'll be seeing some things that we're going to start implementing doing some interviewing and um, get our logo developed working on the intro the opening credits 
Um, so we got a lot of things coming up. But in the meantime, let's get into what we do best. And that's mm. gossip, honey. Yes. Give me the fucking skinny. So let's get started on Miss Beyonce. Okay. okay. It's Beyonce Knowles. Yes, Beyonce. I am so disappointed in you right now, okay? Because you had us waiting all summer long. And I really wasn't even here for a single. Not just summer, like since the winter. Right. Or whatever. You had all of us waiting that you was going to be dropping a single. What's the name of that song? Well, first it was Grown Woman. Grown Woman. Yeah. Okay, then. Mm-hmm. Cute little beat, you know, dance, little twerk spot, you know, got little Miley size twerk and everything going on, <laughs> or whatever, and it's like, we've been waiting all summer, and here it is September, and you still ain't dropped no damn single. Quiet as it's kept, I heard that you're actually filming a video to a song called EXO, or I, I don't know what the name of the damn song is, but you're filming a video, now you done took your ass, your fat ass, all the way over there, across seas, and you doing your tour, Baby. your worldwide tour, and you Baby. over there shaking grown woman and doing all that kind of stuff, and you still have not released a single for the people. What's going on? I mean, I'm just kind of, I feel some type of way about that. Could you release something? Please release something. What you got to say about that, Trey? I mean, you just went off. Yeah, because like, I'm tired of every, everybody anticipating Beyonce singer, Beyonce singer, Beyonce singer, Beyonce. When is she gonna drop something? When is she gonna drop something? She performing this song. She performing this song. BB, please. You loud. Hush. Anyway, back to the regular schedule programming. Go ahead. I almost Trey. walked up. I almost got up on my seat. It went over the hell. Bitch. The hell. The hell always got the Go show ahead and say the line. Go ahead and say the line. I ain't seen. Get out that door. <laughs> Put me on y'all show. Hello, young whore. Okay. Oh. <laughs> anyway, let me get back to Beyonce. Beyonce please. really, to me, I feel like Beyonce is, is 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 doing what she completely wants to do because she knows she's going to have people hanging on that finger. Like I can shoot a picture and look like I'm at a photo shoot, or if I'm at a video shoot, or if I'm making a song or a studio, that bitch, bitch is just going to be thirsty for. It. Yeah. What do you think about her new haircut? Okay, I loved it at first. At the first picture, that's the all. The first picture, it was, honey, she was serving teas. I said, you know, I did a little Vine video. Bitch is going to be cutting their hair off all summer Did you see the Beyonce, the Beyonce emoji? Tees, the Beyonce emoji, all kind of stuff like that. <laughs> and then she went with these tracks, and it was just looking real uneven. I mean, uneven, real unkept. She tried it. Yeah, she tried. She tried but now, she's been looking, it's been looking a whole lot better these last she couple of pictures and stuff that I've seen. Maybe. But her hair is a fucking mess or whatever. Now, But now, it's like I said, she got the little kind of asymmetric cut almost. How I feel on. about what Beyonce is doing, I feel that mm -hmm. after Beyonce's last album, album four, um, that, that was her last album, mm -hmm. I felt that she basically stated it and um, I was here. Mm -hmm. And that 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 track that she basically said she that she not finished yet. I believe she is. No, I believe she just basically gonna just continue to throw those songs out and just make money from that tour and make money from this and just do what she wants to do. She's not finished. She's gonna yet. pull another bump out of the closet and then she's just gonna continue to do what she wants to do. And y'all, excuse me, if I'm sweating, I apologize. He's I'm under sick. The, I'm mm -hmm. up under the weather just mm -hmm. a little bit, and I feel like I'm about I'm on fire. But he's gonna fall out on me. I'm not gonna fall out. Let's transition into another member of Destiny's Child, Mrs. Michelle Williams she and Keisha a, Cole. Just before we jump into the drama mm -hmm. of that, um, have you heard her new song? No. Her new song is quite interesting. Mm -hmm. The video is. It's a gospel. Or it is. It's gospel. Mm -hmm. Um. But the video well, she is, can't make up her mind these days. The video is very nice. It has Latoya Luckett, other former <laughs> member of Destiny Child, in the video. Um, what? Yeah. Is she singing? She's no, who Latoya Luckett? Yeah. No, she's just um, making an appearance. Um, as far as one of the, what's going on, the story that she's telling in the song. But the song to me, it sounds like a whole different range that that Michelle's singing, and I just hate it. It just sounds like she's like <laughs> like the whole entire song. She's in that. I'll let you hear it later. So what what is Latoya Lucky doing? She's playing a girl in the video. Oh, she's just acting. Yeah, she's acting okay. in the video. You well, know, Latoya Lucky doing her thing. She's also in Future's new video. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's on the upcoming season of um, Single Ladies. Single Ladies, and she also has some on the Citric. Yeah, but she's on. She's coming on another show too. She I gave her coins. Was. Coins. But anywho, if you guys remember during the Super Bowl, the last during season one, yeah. we heard about this whole you know tweet that Keisha Cole had tweeted um, Michelle Williams about her dancing and her, her performance, singing and her that. singing and all kind of stuff like that. And Keisha Cole, what little career she did have 
or whatever, you know, simply just faded away into the sunset as a result of that. Not only did she pick or did she start um, beef with Michelle Williams, but she started with somebody else Kelly too. Rowland too. Kelly Rowland. Mm -hmm. Or whatever. Well, recently, Michelle and Keisha Cole actually sat down and um, they had a face-to-face -face or whatever. And this is what Keisha Cole tweeted. I apologize for the mean things I said. It hurt me when I went to your page and saw what you said during my performance, which I don't even know what that's all about. But And, it, and that still doesn't make it okay. I said what I said out of anger, and that's the absolute wrong time to say things. Yes, it is. And then Michelle um, retweeted and said, apology accepted, Keisha Cole. We had an amazing conversation, and I can also say sorry for any misunderstandings. Notice she didn't say that I said something. It was just a misunderstanding. I'm so happy. I'm so happy this happened. All I can say is Keisha Cole needed to do some type of damage control because obviously them fish and chicken dinners that she was selling outside of them um, award shows, and and they just wasn't working out for her. So I'm glad to see that you guys went ahead and buried the hatchet. A lot of people need to take note. Hence, K. Michelle and Tamar. What the hell is going on with them, Trey? Well, K. Michelle, we already know was raunchy, ratchet, ghetto, off the chain. But she's been working on it. She's been working she, on it. She's been losing it as well since this album. It's like she worked on it up until the album came out. The album came out, she just went back to do what she wanted to do. That's not true. Well, Tamar was on The Breakfast Club and had an interview, basically. And she, this is what Tamar said. Mm -hmm. Tamar said, if you do one thing, one good gesture, does that make up for calling me a Muppet? Muppet. Muppet. My bad. Muppet. <laughs> now, K. Michelle is not the only... Muppet. Sorry. <laughs> Kay Michelle is not the only individual who has called Tamar a Muppet. I mean, if you think about it, she does look like Miss Piggy. I mean, if they do a, um, you know, a, a, a freaking thing, you know, she does look like Miss Piggy. But she also said, does that make up for telling everyone I lip sync? Now, if you ask me, that Good Morning America performance, you should have lip sync. Because, for one, you don't come and try to sing a high range song like that at 7 o'clock in the morning if you ain't woke up in the morning and warmed your vocals up. I'm just going to say that. So anything, you should have lip sync. But she went on to say, I don't want to talk about her. In my third day, I sold 100,000 copies of my album. So, so we weren't... So no, we, it's platinum. 100,000? No, that's a million. That's okay. a million. So we weren't even in the same conversation in life. Who that's said that? That's what Tamar said. Hmm. So after that happened, K. Michelle took to Twitter. One thing she said is, you keep throwing rocks at me, and then you run behind your husband, behind Vince, man boobs. You're not above right looking ch shady boobs. Like, there's been Twitter, be like, that, that seems like that is the source for these celebrities. Like us, if we have beef, you know, we see at the club, you know, we, we would like, you know, tell a friend, like, man, tell them I'm gonna beat his ass, something like that. But these celebrities, they take to Twitter. But the thing is, like with that whole came I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I'm just gonna read a couple of other um, couple of other her tweets. She said this shit is so damn hard. I, <laughs> she said I really <laughs> I'm really trying to stay positive and live my life. I bought an album to support and everything. Which she did. I have to give Tamar that. I mean I have to give K Michelle that. You know, she did go say, you know, I'm buying Tamar's album to support her. You know, Tamar has that whole kind of snobby, shady, I'm better than you type thing going mm -hmm. on. It's like subtle shade in mm -hmm. a sense. Mm -hmm. Or whatever. K Michelle is just, you know, straight to the point. Mm -hmm. You know, whole oh, this is this is, is what it is. You know, K Michelle even went I mean, she was saying that Tamar inflated her own um, album sales by buying her old singles and all kind of sell like stuff like that. Buying her old political, albums, very political, very political, and all kind of stuff like that. And then it was some. It was another tweet, something about a wig or whatever. Like, um, what's her name? Tamar said, "K Michelle stole her look." Kmart, take Kmart. <laughs> wow, that's what the title. That's what the right. beef should be titled. Kmart. Kmart. Yeah. Um, Tamar has been known for saying that a lot of people stole her looks. Like even she had got Tamar had got attacked by a lot of Brandy fans mm -hmm. because Tamar had previously said that Brandy stole her weave, stole her hair look when Brandy was doing a photo wears shoot. Braids. No, when I uh, no, you know damn well that all Brandy does not wear braids now. I didn't mean, that. <laughs> but that's all but she that was, was there was a look when Brandy did a photo shoot and Tamar had tweeted that oh Brandy stole my look, but Tamar you have stole look, like your looks is Tony Braxton anything Tony Braxton has already done, so except for the color I mean you know what I'm saying so it, it just seems like she always says it's not stole her looks mm -hmm. and that's that mainly where the beef started with K Michelle when she just started acting like she is the girl I think the thing the primary thing is that Tamar feels that she's been in this game for a long time Tamar has been here since. 
Tony's been here. But she's, she's been, been a been BGV. Right. She's been a background boy. Right. So, so now, now it's just like they're both, now they finally have their album out. They both feel like they're the shit. Mm-hmm. I think both of them need to remember where they come from. Remember their lane. Remember they're not even in the the, the same lane as <laughs> as when you have when you have Beyonce. I was shit. I even say Sierra. Sierra been out here doing her thing since. Sierra, hold what? on. Listen to what I'm Bitch, saying. Bitch, whatever. Listen to what I, Let me say. Did y'all catch the tease that her album was on Groupon for ninety nine cent? I ain't the one to gossip, but you ain't heard that from me. At least Tamar and uh, K. Michelle are already going hundreds and thousands of dollars of album sales. Um, that girl, Sierra, probably didn't even sell 1,000 albums. Her record was on Groupon Trey for 99 cent. How bad could it be? Bitch, let me go on iTunes and put me a single out. I bet you I sell more records than what you will. What's your song going to be titled? <laughs> um, what's what's it going to be titled? I don't know. Mm. What would it be titled? Huh? A mess. <laughs> <laughs> well, bitch, I, I'll sell you. I. <laughs> yeah. Them, you them, bet. them brandy stands ain't. They ain't. They gonna support me. Whatever. But they anywho. Support me. I'm just sick of this whole Tamar and K Michelle, K Michelle stuff. Y'all go ahead and bury it. It's stupid. I, I, it's retarded. I'm right. It just both of y'all just share the spotlight, honey. Because at the end of the day. If Beyonce drops a new single, oh God. everybody going to be shut down. <laughs> everybody is going to be shut down. I'm talking about national holidays. I'm talking about people going to want refunds back from their Tamar <laughs> and came and shut Bitch, Beyonce got a new album. Give me my 9 99 back now. I demand a motherfucking refund. Because she will. She will come shut it down. Lights out. My friend Terrence said... She Beyonce ain't drop a single because she's giving them the opportunity to get their shine. Don't she's giving them the, the opportunity no to go Don't ahead and sell their, no to sell their little one hundred thousand dollars. I mean one hundred k albums or whatever. Because but, when no shame. when the queen comes, look all hell queen B. And I'm not even here for her all the time like that. No, either. no shade. But shout out to for to Tamar for actually being the first female artist in a row to debut to even sell. Over 100,000 copies first week. The first who what? Female in the wild. Like even this year. What's the wild? Like this the past two years probably. She's been the first female artist to debut with more than 100,000 copies first week. Shit, Monica didn't do it. Brandy didn't do it. Sierra didn't do it. Kelly didn't do it. Fantasia didn't do it. Like all of them didn't do it. Tamar Braxton did it. Summer album. So we've had who? We had... Tamar came out with her album. Mm -hmm. K. Michelle came out with her album. Mm -hmm. Sierra album is still available on Groupons for ninety nine cents. It's still in Target as well. <laughs> Possibly at Kmart if you have a Kmart in your local Kmart. Bitch, go to Family Dollar and Dollar General. They probably Sierra have that album. too in the corner store. Go to your local. <laughs> I was just about to say that. Go to your local store. Sierra girl, it's just so easy. You're just an easy target. But Sierra album is like, go, good go, though. Girl, it is. Girl. It is. Child. You know, I keep it real. There's some kind of music. It actually is good. It's the second best album of her career. No, third. Third. Because Evolution was good. But her first one was good. To Goodies. Or whatever it's called. Mm -hmm. This is her third. Anyway. No. Ain't second. nobody here for no. none of that stuff. Ari, what's the girl name? Ariana? Ariana Grande. Who did yeah. the great boot over Tamar. I, heard, I haven't heard her album yet, but I heard it's good. It's, it's creating a lot of buzz. The new more I carry. Right. Because she, them whistle tones. Yeah. I can't do it right now because I'm a little under. Y'all know I can sing. Mama, I can sing. I can get in them whistle tones. I can get in them whistle tones and stuff like that like she can. You know how Mariah Carey be having her finger up like this when she be all up there lip syncing and all that kind of shit like that. But the girl, the girl got some pipes. I have to give it to her. She Man, does have she, some pipes. She does her thing. Her album is good. And then supposedly she has another album coming out in February. As well as Tamar has a Christmas album coming much. out in October. Well, yeah, I mean, that's, but most artists, sophomore, their real sophomore albums are really Christmas albums, but a lot of people don't really pay attention to that. After that first album, people usually drop their Christmas album, and then, you know, Christmas albums go on sale in October and all kind of stuff like that. But well, let's not forget about the males. We did have males. Wait a minute, Kelly Rowland. Oh. Kelly, I, you know, I don't know what happened, because, you know, Kelly Rowland, girl, you were the it girl of the. 2012, 2013, you was featured on everybody else, you was on the runways, you was at the award shows. Killing the runways. Like, you was doing everything, and then you come out this album and you leave. 
And you're gonna do X Factor. I don't know what happened. Like X Factor's on right now, and she's doing a good job, I think, for what I've seen. She's doing a pretty decent job. She but is. like her album, she was really promoting it, going real hard. When she was performing, she wasn't just sticking to one song on the album. She was kind of giving them all the tracks to even play for the album is pretty good. Mm -hmm. But I just don't know what happened. Like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what's her latest single? Do you even know? We um, don't know. Yeah, it is. It's um Girl, tweet me and let me know. No, it is. It's um Hold on, give me one second. It's the one with Wiz Khalif. Um, oh, um, I like that song. Um, um, oh, gone. Doom, doom. Gone. Uh, uh, da, da, da. Uh, yeah, that song right there. Now, that's I her, love that. That's her new single. I love that song. I love that song. So yeah, that and then Fantasia. But Fantasia album came out when we were here for season one. Yeah, Fantasia anyway. just her look has been slaying. Shout out to her stylist. I don't know who her stylist is. Her I think he's from the show. Whoever, whoever works out with her, whoever styles her. Honey. Whoever Fantasia. Whoever her. I am glad that you went through a you rebooted your whole look, your whole image. You look good. You're sounding good. You ain't kicking off your shoes like you used to yeah. whenever you used to perform. Yeah. Only thing I'm hoping, girl, I hope you stacking that bread. I just hope that you you <laughs> saving your money because I don't want you to have to file bankrupts anymore or all kind of stuff like that. She what? She spelled better on Twitter and Facebook. Rosetta Stone is really short, working you good, honey. Hooked on phonics, work for you. She also has a new, um, a new um, endorsement. Is that um, makeup? She you know for her skin. She was on. Um, well, I don't think she would sell makeup there. No, it's not really makeup. It's my bad. It's like a skin um, care ointment. Yeah, because she, you know, mm. she has good skin now, and she was on. She she posted it on her Instagram. That's good for her. that's good for you, girl. Get the endorsement. The men. So we had Jaheen. Yeah, Jaheen. Trey let me listen to this song just now. Jaheen, you know, Jaheen is really for grown folks. Um, and when I'm talking grown, 50, 60, 70. That old? That old. Yeah, not even 40. When Jaheen think. first came out, I remember a lot of people, and I, and I don't, don't slap me for this, but I remember a lot of people saying when he first came out that he was going to be like the revampment of R. Kelly. Like, they saw him actually being able to be, like, the, the grown woman's sex, like, sing for the grown women, like R. Kelly did. Yeah. And he just, like, boom, he's gone now. I mean, like, he just, I don't... But Jaheen does his thing, though. He comes, he drops, Let's he talk sings, about this song that I let you hear then. This song that he did, what is it called? Florida. Florida. He had a song called Florida. That he did for Trey Trey Martin. 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 Um, he was only 17. Yeah, it sounded like a real church song. I don't know. Go listen to it. Boy. Jaheen's Florida. Go. I mean, it's positive message. Of <laughs> course. Positive <laughs> message. But John. girl, you could have kept that. Jaheen. <laughs> John Legend had the album came out. John Legend. Oh, his song. Um, oh, 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 of me. I give you all. His song is beautiful. He wrote it for his girlfriend, his fiance. Oh. Excuse me. Um, beautiful song, beautiful song, beautiful wedding song too. Oh, oh okay. T G T, T G T. That's kind of hard to say. That's Tank, G Wine, and Tyrese. They yeah. have really been um, in talks of this album for a while, and it finally came out. Well, over the summer, I do know that G Wine was allegedly drunk or high During or the something. Performance. <laughs> Their performances. Uh. Or whatever. But shout out to Jay Stavo in Atlanta, Georgia, my best friend artist. He opened up for TGT and... Ain't that hard to say? Fant yeah, it is. It opened up for Fantasia and TGT in Atlanta, mm. Georgia. Go buy his single on iTunes, I Heart You. Awesome song. It is. Shout out to him. Um, J. Cole's album came out. I don't know. I don't know. Ooh, stop. 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 Trump. How you stop. doing? Stop. <laughs> Jay-Z... Of course, his album, Magna Carla, Carter, Holy Grail, came out. And Justin Timberlake actually has part two of his album coming out later on. Don't put that up. Don't do that. I don't want no Illuminati stuff coming on through here. So that might get us some, that might get us some views and some, some <laughs> promotion. Right, and we're going to get letters and, and all kind of... Turn up! Black crows mailed to us. I be saying turn up. You know they call me? Boys, they call me Ridge Jr. Okay, anyway, moving remember, along. Remember so, he, remember he was that shout album. out to all the people so, this summer who dropped their albums, and we'll be keeping you updated dropping, on what's the coming for the August and <laughs> dropping their baby. Speaking of <laughs> dropping summer albums, 
I don't know what the fuck was in the water. Well, you know, it's just like high school. You know, when you go away for the summer, when you summer break, you get pregnant, you come back <laughs> during the winter from school, everybody pregnant. Everybody pregnant. Everybody damn pregnant. But all these people must have got pregnant. During the winter, and then they had the baby And the then summer. they had the baby during the summertime, honey, because we got first up Northwest. Woo, the Northwest baby. That's a cute baby. That baby is pretty. It's very, baby. very pretty. Yeah. Kanye and... Kim Kardashian had a beautiful little baby. North is a boy or girl? That's a girl. That's a girl. So Northwest, beautiful baby girl. Um, honey, the pictures, you know. Oh, we you had know to who wait. else we forgot? Who? Go ahead. I'll mention, I'll mention who we forgot. Okay. Blue Ivy, but she's a little older yeah, they or know. whatever. She really wasn't a summer baby. But I love this summer how the people was like having these Blue Ivy versus Northwest pictures or whatever. This summer, those were hilarious. Um... Prince William and Kate Middleton had their little baby, Prince George, honey. The whole world was watching that that um that delivery. Who you think had the biggest pregnancy? The um the Prince William or Northwest? Who had the best, you know, delivery of the summer? I would have to say I think who I'm okay, I'm gonna say this who looked the best pregnant. I'm gonna have to say Monica. Mm-hmm. Who had the most publicity? I'm gonna have to say Kim. Yeah, I would have to say so too. But we forgot about somebody else who had a baby. Who? Rashida. Rashida and Kirk had. Oh baby. yeah, I forgot about that. But that fake ass shit all this summer long on real love and hip hop. That was fake. I don't care what nobody say. Rashida and Kirk. That was staged. This whole past season of we're not going back to that. But serious, it was staged. I enjoyed it. Don't get me wrong, because it was pure wretchedness. And I don't my think it was favorite, staged, though. yeah, she that was, was crying in real teeth. A lot of that stuff was staged. It was staged. It was staged. I I really do feel that they can say that it was real drama all they want to, but I really feel that it was staged. Um, who else had a baby this summer? Holly is pregnant. Her old ass. How the hell are you 47 years old having a damn baby? Almost I don't care what nobody say. Holly Berry is a little cuckoo. So I, 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 I really yeah, do think no, so. No. And I'm mad at you, Holly Berry, because you went off and got pregnant. Now, you know you were supposed to be shooting X-Men. And as a result of her pregnancy, they actually had to cut back on her role a little bit in the upcoming... Um, Get out of here. The, the X-Men X movie... Um, the first one was first class. This one, Days of Future Past. It's the new one that's coming out this summer in May. They had to pull back on her role a little bit because of the fact that she was pregnant. I think they also had to change her suit because when they first revealed her suit, it was a new suit. It was hot, honey. Fucking nice but, man. But Holly Berry, you cuckoo. Don't she already have a baby? Yes. But she don't have custody of it, does she? She need to have custody of her pregnancy. She 47 years old. But leave Holly Berry alone, but girl. You can't whatever. be messing up the fans who want to see right. X-Men. And what, see, that's why I always say Angela Bassett, Angela Bassett should have played Storm no, in the first no, place because she looks Angela like Storm. Bassett. Yeah, she does. But she probably could have did a better Storm. Of course she could have. Holly Berry has been dry, but... Think um, about Storm in, in the comics, in the cartoon. No. Angela Iman, Bassett. Iman. No. Iman would have made an awesome Storm. Mm -hmm. It's another... What's that girl from Boomerang? Mm -hmm. What was her name? Holly Berry. Grace Jones. Grace Jones or... Angela Bassett. Okay, I could give you Angela Bassett. Grace Jones, Angela Bassett, or Iman would have been a better cast. They should have been cast for Storm better than Holly Berry because she just dry. Jessica Simpson also had a baby this summer too. She just is dry. Or whatever. Too. That's Holly Berry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And Monica, we already said that, right? She Congratulations, had a baby. Monica. Congratulations, Monica, and her mother's girl. girl. Little, yeah, they finally got one, right? Got a little girl, yeah. Right. So, congratulations to them. But, child, albums were dropping this summer. Babies, uh, was, dropping. babies was dropping this summer. Oh, and a whole bunch of drama on R&B Divas LA, honey. Ooh. Let me tell you. At first, I was kind of hesitant because I was like, I wonder, you know, because right now, these whole women on reality shows, these housewives, it's all about drama, drama, drama. drama and drama, drama. basketball wives, the original ones, they were the one that really kind of fucked it up for everybody with all the drama and the bullying and all kinds of stuff like that. So everybody's just being very conscious of what they put out there and how the women are portrayed. I was very, first of all, I would say that I really enjoyed R&B Divas. Whatever R&B Divas Atlanta ain't doing, they need to get the same type of production that L.A. got. Uh -huh. Because L.A. looked better. Mm -hmm. uh, the reunion was uh, two times over a whole lot better 
than the Atlanta reunion. The Atlanta reunion was just low budget. It was dark lighting. I don't even know why they got that guy to host it. But what, what do you, how did you feel about this season of R&B Divas LA? You know, if it was it was really for me a, a reintroduction of each diva. Mm -hmm. Um because we I don't want to say we forgot about them, but this this Yeah, we did. We, we did. We forgot. We forgot about them. Well, I didn't forget about Lil Mo and I didn't forget about I did. I did. Oh. Mm -hmm. No shade, but I did. No tea? No tea, no shade. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. I didn't forget about Lamo. And I did not forget about um I almost said Angie Stone. Wow. Well, she, we, she. No, I, I, I was really meaning, um, I wasn't really meaning Angie Sona, that's the thing. What's the girl name who's booked? Was Tasha Scott? No, the one who's always booked. Kelly Price. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> She's so booked, Bitch, I forgot about And you ain't even worth, I thought you was worth multi million dollars. Kelly Price, you ain't worth shit. You ain't, I, you, but you stay booked. You stay booked all the damn time, but you ain't got no coins. She stay booked. That bitch reading a book. Listen. That's what it is. Okay, so, Lil Mo. How do you think she did this season? She did good. Right. She did good. She 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 showed. I the thing about it is I think when I say revamped of each character, <laughs> each person is because this generation mm -hmm. don't know Ashante Moore. They don't know a Michelle. 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 Mm -hmm. They don't know a um a, um a Claudette. Mm -hmm. You know Ortiz. 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 Okay. Um. You know. So it was good. Yeah. It was good, and their drama seemed more genuine and than authentic than Atlanta. That Claudette, she looks, she's a mess. I really think she's a mess. Who Claudette? Yeah, like, cause she was like almost living in her car. She kind of cleared, she kind of cleared that up a little bit on the reunion, but she's beautiful. You know, baby, baby so, daddy drama. You know, trying to raise kids and do her own thing in this industry. Beautiful lady, though. She's beautiful, and I really hope that. This gives her an opportunity to get, you know, gives her another platform where she can make money and support her family. Because obviously, her baby daddies ain't doing what they're supposed yeah, to be they're doing. Really they're not doing. Sure Michelle, girl, your voice is hilarious. I don't know why everybody always gotta say that I'm the one that's talking about. Girl, I love it though. Her her nose is kind of like she clarified what was bit. what was going on. on the yeah, she did. I can't tell you what it was, but yeah, she that. Then we got um, Dawn, Dawn Richards, girl. Not, not Dawn, I just thought Cameron. she was just so strong. You know, I don't know why I just thought because she, she was, was the, tall. She was the front runner in in Vogue. She's the oldest out of all of them. I just thought that she was so much more stronger than what she was. She seemed she came across very weak, and she tried to have a baby. Honey, you are not Holly Berry or whatever. Like I think Holly Berry is forty-seven. How old is Dawn? Fifty. I'm not even going in with you. I'm for real. I don't know how old she is, but them eggs are good in powder. They bold. Girl, give it up. Go ahead and adopt you a child. I know you want to have a baby, but give your eggs to some other young girl. Put that man's sperm with that egg and let somebody else carry that baby. Because I just think you barking up. Give it up. I'm mad because you didn't bring your ass to the reunion and she's you was 44. weak as hell. She was weak. I thought she was older than that. No, she's 44. Okay. But anywho. And just to clarify. But you, she you might can't get pregnant, let, man. Let me just clarify because you did say that the, the, the wrong last night. I mean, no one to get confused because there's a Don Richards. You did say that. That's from Danny Kane. It's Don Robinson. Oh, Robinson. Okay. Well, I stand corrected. But this whole monologue thing. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna take this ring off. Uh, it, the monologue was very creative. It was a good idea because it actually told what happened, and and and, and uh, it's, it's it's sad that a lot of things that they went through, especially with Kelly Price. I just I didn't know, honestly. I, I didn't know. I I didn't know she was raped when she was three years three old. Three years old. How wow, do, female. Three years old. Mm -hmm. So that's the monologue. The monologue was, was something good. This whole thing it really opened up eyes to a lot of them. What they it to me, it just seems like the people in the production was pulling a lot of strings behind the scenes, and it, I, I don't know if they were pulling strings purposely to create drama amongst them, but this is like the first reality show that the production people ah. and them just don't seem to get along with each other, and they painted Kelly Price. Who is the wizard? Somebody from production, the or the people in production. Do we have a wizard? No, we don't have a wizard. But are we gonna get a wizard? 
No, we're not gonna get a wizard. That's not a good thing, huh? I don't think so. I you, think you're not can, sleeping with I wizard, think we can you? we can pull our own strings and all kind of stuff like that. I mean, because we can pull the strings. But the thing is, the whole monologue thing. So the whole beef you're was. Not lying to me, are you? No, There's what's really the guy's wizard, name? Right? Shut up, um, Trey. I just want to make sure. Fred. Fred was his name. He was the director that yeah. Shantae and apparently production was bringing in for this. Kelly had her own producer director, which is the inexperienced guy Child. from the other thing she that they had went to. That's all. Kelly Price wasn't showing up to the events and she had the event when she invited them they didn't come. But anywho, she was hooping and hollering talking about I'm not comfortable with Fred, but you're comfortable with the other guy, but the other five women may not be comfortable with your guy. So my thing is like, it's almost, it was like a double standard. Her argument was crazy. You know, Fred was somebody that all of them really didn't know because production was the one that brought Fred in, not Shantae. Right, right. So it's just like, all, regardless of what the fact, somebody's going to be uncomfortable, but that was the whole purpose of the rehearsals. So they can get, you know, comfortable with each other and stuff. But it just turned into a real big mess. And then Kelly Price was just being extra. Like, I did not know you were that extra, Kelly Price. Like, seriously, you wear shades everywhere. She says she explained why because they all prescription. But, like, the whole thing with Lamo went off on her. And now they not all talking. And Kelly Price looked like she kept getting caught in lies during the reunion, during part one. It was just a whole bunch of mess. A whole bunch of mess. Now Dawn probably not coming back for season two. Kelly Price not sure she coming back for season two. The show was just crazy. It, it was crazy, but it was good. I think R&B Divas is like the most genuine reality show, like with authentic sort of kind of like drama. All I have is, is if they bring her back for season two, mm -hmm. and if Don or Kelly Price doesn't come back, bring Tamia. Who? T I almost called you nigga, and I don't even like that word. Well, yeah, I do. You don't know who Tamia is? Sing a song. I am so into That's one of them. I really like would you come to me. I can't really, really explain. explain. Oh, yeah. There's a stranger in my house. Okay, oh, Melly. Yeah, she was a good like R&B singer back in the day. Back in the day, she's... <laughs> well, she ain't doing nothing new these days. Nah, no tea, no shade, bitch. How you not know to me is? But, yeah, okay. So, yeah, she might be a good addition to the cast. What about Deborah Cox? Yes. What do you think about her? Yes, her. Right. Deborah Cox does a lot of that house stuff now or whatever, but she's old school R and B or whatever. So that might be a good one too. Yeah, that Deborah Cox to me. Deborah Cox to me. What if they do an R and B Divas New York? Who would be in there? I don't know. One could be um I have to say it because she's my girl, Sharifa. Okay. She um she's in Jersey. So her um <laughs> I don't know anybody else. I don't know nobody else either. Uh, Mary J. No, Mary J. Don't need to be on R and B <laughs> Um, I mean that would be interesting for her to be on there. We still waiting she to hear back from VH1 on the struggle. Remember we said that during season one we was gonna have a reality show called the Struggle. Yeah, we're still in talks with VH1 about the struggle. <coughs> um, or whatever. We'll but. think about some people from New York. Um, yeah, if they were to do that, we would have to think about that. What's next on the docket? Um, um we're gonna talk about. Tyler, Tyler Perry. Perry. Okay. Tyler Perry has, has been doing a lot of hands-on. Hands-on. I mean, he's really been hands-on. Like, he's been hands-on with he's been own. Hands-on with own. He came in and just gave own like a a a, a, a Molly. A boost. Yeah. He gave hands-on a Molly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Papa Molly, I'm sweating. sweating. You yeah. know what I'm saying? God, honey, That's what I'm he sweating, came in man. and did because he the has and have nots. Honey. Is I think the best thing Tyler Perry has put on television. Hello, young whore. Hello, young whore. Bitch, get your ass out the door. You can't get ahead by giving it. <laughs> Wanna be? <laughs> I mean, that show. That that was lines from the season finale. Yeah. If you don't remember, but it's really a good show. I mean, he came in. He's he got his other show coming in that with Tasha Smith. Uh, um, for, I ain't watching on TV. Better or for worse. TNT, whatever was on, I ain't watching it on on on. Um, I just I don't I don't get into that show really. Yeah. Now the other ones, Love Thy Neighbor, that was pretty good. A lot of forced acting, but it appears to be. Coming along a whole lot better, mm -hmm. um, and then you got um, what's the other show? Um, but yeah, yeah, the have and have nots. That's a that that's the best thing I think Tyler Perry has put out since Medea. 
I would have to say so. I, I would agree. Yeah, especially on the television network because Meet the Browns. I didn't really follow that one. I really um, what's the very first one? Um, uh, oh, um, damn, Meet the Browns. Um, I'll look it up. But talk about what what else he did. House, House of Pain. That's the first one. House of Pain was the first one. I used to keep up with that one at first, but then I fell behind. Meet the Browns. Seems like I think it was another one. Oh, the other one that's going to own now with Tasha. Yeah. Or whatever. But I don't, I don't really get into it. I might watch a couple of shows of it just to... Well, give it a chance. Just to come up. But another thing Tyler Perry was doing was laying hands on Bishop T.J. T.J. So, word on the street was down there oh, in God, down Texas there. doing Mega Fest. Tyler Perry decides to get up and flex his checkbook and hey. donate a million dollars hey. to Bishop T.D. Jakes. I think they're trying to start some kind of youth center or hmm. some type of something they're trying to start down there. So he got up on the pulpit stage and then he donated a million dollars into T.D. Jakes ministry. Hmm. And then he started preaching about hmm. preparing the table before my enemies. My enemies, my enemies, all y'all niggas my enemies. Who is that? That's Eve, right? Fuck y'all niggas, my enemies. My oh my enemies. gosh. Who sings that stuff? I, I don't know who sings that. Yeah, I don't, I don't but anyway. So Tyler Perry gets up there and he starts ministering. And then he goes over and he lays his hands on Bishop T D Jakes. And just starts just starts giving the word. Yeah, start, you know, depositing to him and speaking over his life and all kind of stuff like that. And Bishop Jakes was just like this right here. And he stayed like that for a good 30 minutes or to an hour or something like that particular <laughs> Maybe I would have. How do you feel about that, Trey? I have really... Okay, well, let me just say this first. I really I felt like that was a good... I don't know if it was, like you said, a flex of his checkbook when he gave the million dollars. Because they actually asked for a certain amount. Mm -hmm. But he was like, forget it. We're going to do a million. But he was led to do more. Because yeah. I think they only asked for... I forgot how much he only asked for, but he was led to give more yeah. because of the good things that Bishop Jake's ministry is doing. A lot of people criticized Tyler because they felt that he was showing off by giving a million dollars. That they also felt that he could have given that money to other ministries across the, the nation or the world. Bishop T.D. Jake's ministry is already a multi-million dollar min, you know, ministry. Why would you want to continue to invest in the rich and not give it to someone else's ministry who, let's say a boys and, girl, boys and girls club in Atlanta or Chicago or some type of after school program. There were other ministries Maybe. that could have benefited from a million dollars. Ministries. What's your ministry? Trey. <laughs> Simple as that. Child. He could have put it right in that Wells Fargo. Null and boy. <laughs> But, um, you know, it's Woo! here's my thing. Say that thing. Tyler Perry made his money, and at the end of the day, he do what the hell he want to do with it. We can't criticize him for right. who do he decides to give his money to. He That's not he, our place. He prayed for about anybody it. He prayed about who it. said that, and I don't, I don't think pray, he was just led. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He prayed about it, and that's what led him to, led him to even giving that amount. So... Some people say it was impulse that he just wanted to do it and show out in front of everybody else. Because, you know, Oprah was down there and all kind of stuff like I mean, that. Shoot. Um, hey. But, I mean, like I said, I can't get mad at him. You give your money to whoever the hell you want to give it to, Tyler Perry. It's your money. Do I believe that other ministers could have benefited from that? Most yeah. definitely. Yeah. I do believe so. But, you know, we don't know what ministries Bishop T.D. Jake's powerhouse is affecting in that area. Right. So, it could be you depositing into this but it might trickle down into the, you know, into the communities and surrounding areas and stuff like that. Now, as far as Tyler Perry putting his hands on Bishop T.D. Jakes, you know, some of us are a little old school. Mm -hmm. Some of us are a little old school, so we don't let everybody lay hands on us. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, Tyler Perry, was, he was preaching. I would have to say he was coming from a good place. And if the Lord led him to touch him, he touched him. If Bishop Jakes allowed it. What is it for us to say? Right. We're not. Why are we commenting? Why are we judging on it? If Bishop Jakes allowed it, and during that whole time, Bishop Jakes could have been praying that whatever spirit Tyler Perry has in him, 
it don't transfer into his body or whatever the case may be because he was standing there praying for a long time so he had to break every chain but my thing is it's i mean i don't know it's 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 created a lot of controversy i was looking at some i was looking at the clip on youtube and a lot of people were going in making all these comments about it but it is what it is that's all I, that's how i feel it is what it is um if bishop jakes let him put his hands on him, then oh well yeah, everybody, I mean, all the other people, they ran up to him, they was holding him up, and he was, you know, oh, you know, speaking in tongues and all kinds of stuff like that, but that's it. I think that's enough, Trey. I'm tired. We can talk about the VMAs in the next episode. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm kind of doped up on some medicine. That's my shit right now. Mm, 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 mm. Let it go, the all right, guys, so this was our part one of our season premiere. We will come back and we will post part two in which we will be talking about the VMAs and some other things that happened over this past summer as well, just to kind of get our take on it. Um, we're going to be bringing in the original Tasha Mack. If you remember, I had a, um, she and I did a, one or two shows talking about Trayvon Martin. So she's going to join us in our part two of no. our season premiere. Can I address that real quick? Because, oh, go ahead. Because there was a little, there was a little drama oh, circled around that whole thing. There were a couple of viewers or fans of the show who basically reached out to to me and thought I had been replaced. Um, I'm not replaced. The no, thing is, we all know that I've relocated to Atlanta, mm -hmm. so there will be a couple of episodes interim where ta um, the real Tasha Mack, original, Tasha original. Mack. Tasha Mack may fill in for me. So what we're going to do is to the our next episode, our part two of our season premiere. Right. Um, we're going to bring her in so we kind of introduce her along with me and you know Mar Alexis Maurice here. Right. So, so she's going to be helping me out because Trey isn't here, and I think we've worked out possibly a schedule where I may go down there once a month and we do a sh couple of shows or do a show or two down there in Atlanta, and he comes here. And in the interim, we'll have, <laughs> we'll have Tasha sitting with me or whatever. She's fresh, she's funny. So um, if you hadn't seen it, go back and look at the other two episodes between season one and this episode and you'll get to meet her, but we'll meet her again. <laughs> Tasha, get him. You see him, right? He being shady. Gag, gag his ass when you get here. But anyway, that's it. We'll talk to you guys later. Bye.